VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. Yo, this is so exciting to be back here on my podcast, VIP Access. I've been trying to host this particular artist for the last three weeks. You can hear it from my <laughs> voice. You know, between the hard work, between the Nairobi flu, it's not been easy, but yo, we have to show up. And what I love about this artist is she's always so calm, so chill. And I feel like um, having been in the industry for a long time and having worked with many celebrities, sometimes we just crave for that kind of energy she gives. You know, it's not all celebrities who are so understanding, so calm. Like I've res literally rescheduled this interview, I think three or four times. And every time she was like, I'll show up. When you asked me to show up, you know, she's, she was here. She's just been very patient with me. And it's such an honor to have Fena Gitu on VIP Access Podcast. What's up, my girl? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. It's so nice to be here with you. Very um, excited to be here. Yeah. yeah, it's been so long. It's been so long. You know, we've been together on VIP Access, but that was previously before this different sort of podcast, um, you know, format. Yeah. Um, we had a, a, a nice interview. I remember we had Alchemist. Mm -hmm. We, I think, were probably speaking about an upcoming album, which was Unleashed, your second oh, album. Yes. And now it's been quite some time. We yeah. have a new album out. Yeah. So, how are you feeling? Um, I'm happy to be alive. I think at the, the at the beginning of it all is just being alive and well and you know, still at it, still consistently doing this. Mm -hmm. Um we could have fallen off any time, but we're still yeah. here. So yeah. that's something to be grateful for. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So shout out to all the people listening to this podcast from across um the continent and the world. I actually was looking at the stats and I was really surprised that I have more listeners outside of Kenya. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that really serves the purpose of why I created this podcast because traveling around the world, meeting people asking me what's happening in Kenya, what's happening yeah. in South Africa, I thought I thought, why not have a podcast? <clears throat> that actually spotlights the cool artists and creatives, um, you know, that we have in Kenya. So when yeah. people ask me the question, I'll be like, go listen to my podcast and you might discover really dope artists from Kenya and, and beyond. So yeah. shout out to all the people listening. And um, in case you're not from Kenya or East Africa or Africa and you're not conversant with Fena Gito, I'm just going to do a small <laughs> introduction, yeah? <laughs> Fena has always been doing her thing. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, she has a song called Doing Her Thing, though. Yeah. She's a really cool artist. She's a Kenyan singer, songwriter, you know, performer, entrepreneur, um, and also runs her own production company and label called Fena um, Phenomenal Entertainment. Yes. So it's a lot of things that you've been able to accomplish for yourself, but also you've been in the industry for a good number of years. Mm -hmm. And like you rightfully state, it's it's so great that you're still standing, you know, and have a new album. So um, when did you start music professionally and what do you feel has changed so much since then? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in your opinion. Um, I'd say obviously a lot has changed I'm on a very conscious um, growth um, channel. So with every project, with every body of work, you'll hear a very different version of me, but there's still the, let me call it the DNA that, stick, that stays consistent throughout. Mm. So I started um, 2008, um, Alliance Francaise. Remember when we do Fête de la Musique? So I think in that space where I met the Saudi souls and the Lannies, you know, those days when we'd go all hang out and write music in the mm. courtyard um, and seeing, first of all, where they have reached the, the kind of success they've achieved. Um, and also just being in that train right behind them, like still pushing, um, doing shows internationally, um, having, you know, being on podcasts like this that are being listened to around the world. Um, the industry has changed so, so much. Um, the audiences are more receptive. The creatives are even more creative. Um, the, the quality of work has improved. So it's exciting to see Kenyans finally being recognized. I do feel we still have a very long way to go. We're still, unfortunately, lagging behind in a sense. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I mean, I, I'm hopeful that things, you know, we have 
platforms like this that are really doing good work. Mm. Yeah. I actually want to talk about your style of music. And I, I wish I said this at the introduction, but I'll say it now. Mm -hmm. I, I find that you're one of the most unique artists from you know, this side of the continent period or from the continent period. Yeah. Um, because you're not one thing. Like, you're a really great singer, but mm -hmm. you're actually a really dope rapper. Yeah. And then sometimes you, you and most times you find a way to fuse both of them. Mm -hmm. So I, f I feel like that makes you exist in, in all spaces, you know. Yeah. If we're talking about rap, Mm -hmm. You know, you are going to come and kill it. If you're talking about Bars. singing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to do that. And then also when you sing, and I listen to your songs, like the melodies, mm -hmm. you know, you actually had an acoustic EP. And I was yeah. like, yo, listen to those melodies. Like, mm -hmm. and, and you had a song with Xenia, you know, and I find that Xenia is also one of those really stellar vocalists. Yes. But hearing you and her, it was just such a magical experience. And also seeing you perform. So, um... Can you tell us a little bit more about your style? Because mm. I feel like your style is so versatile and you find a way to exist in it so comfortably yeah. and always kind of display all sides of you, of you at any given opportunity. How mm. do you do that? So, I, I mean, I call it phenomenal style. Uh -huh. that's, that's where it comes from. <laughs> it's like I couldn't find the name, like a specific Even you know it's to, very different. Yeah, so I... I like right now, I'll say I'm an Afrofusion artist mm. or I'm an urban soul artist, but really it's just it's just a phenomenal uniqueness to it. Um, it's influenced a lot by my upbringing. Um, I'm from Buru, Islands, you know, repping all day, five eight. Um, I'm also from Buru. For those who know, that's how if we you actually, know, you know. <laughs> yeah, and that's how we actually became friends to begin that's with. That's how we became friends. I remember yeah. coming to visit you, mm -hmm. and I remember you probably visited me once, but I always wanted to visit the Superstars house more. Yeah, yeah, we used to <laughs> hang out a lot those days. Um, Buru was, you know, the hub of culture back then. So how we dress, the kind of music we used to listen to, you know, hip hop, rap, R and B, reggae, all that kind of. All those influences kind of, you know, shaped me as I was growing up. Um, I got to travel quite a bit as a kid also. So I got to experience, you know, sounds and styles abroad. Um, so they kind of also influenced how I think how I, and how I produce my work. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, I think it's just personality. You, it, it's all unique to everyone. Um, so my DNA is mine. I don't know what else to say to that. It's just like... I like expressing myself as I wish to mm. and just keeping it real always. Um, keep it fresh, keep it cool, keep it simple. Um, sometimes we don't need to complicate too many things to communicate something. Mm. So, yeah, I'd say so. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God, I love it. Your DNA is you. It's all me, baby. <laughs> I am who I am. Yeah. Have you ever been in a situation where you were uncomfortable to be yourself because I always felt this authenticity from you. And like I like I mentioned before, even being at your concert, yeah. you give off different vibes, energy, you incorporate different aspects. Like you always have dances and I don't know, fire blowing yeah. and, and things. So um, has there been any a point where you questioned your own authenticity, originality or the 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 path that you've chosen for yourself as an artist? Mm, I mean, as a human being, of course, you have moments where you doubt yourself. Um, you also have people doubt you a lot. Actually, when I was starting out, it really was an uphill task getting into mainstream, you know, audiences. My style, how I dress, how I look, how I talk, like, it, it, it wasn't the typical sex sales or the like the uh, it wasn't just your average usual thing so mm. it was hard to fit in and I like saying I'm a what's it called a square peg in a round hole hey. <laughs> like you're <laughs> just this awkward thing that's placed in a sea of diff of people yeah. who you know see things one way yeah and I guess I just had to be kind of a tough cookie from when I was a kid I was just like Nimekwa kichongumu for a very long time and I do things a certain way and I I, I move in, con like I'm very convicted with something I'm doing. If I believe this is the thing we're doing, we're doing it. And I don't care if, one, I don't I don't care if it doesn't work out as long as I tried it. Mm. 
and I don't care if people don't like it. If you like it, you know, it's for you. If you yeah. don't, it's not for you. So having that mindset has kind of helped me, you know, just be a bit tough and tough skin. Like I can, it's just like, okay, if you don't fuck with me, I don't fuck with you. Like that kind of energy mm. is like, if you feel me, then I will give you 110%. So yeah, that's kind of how I've moved. I managed to move that like that. I like that because I, I feel like a lot of people grow that skin after they've been, you know, exposed in the industry. But you say, I was always this way. Yeah. And I personally remember when I was younger, like not um, objecting to things, some things that I might not have wanted or not voicing my opinion. And I, I had to reach a certain age and be like, okay, fine. Now I'm going to speak for myself. So it's really great, yeah. you know, to hear that you've been you and, um, you know, you've stuck to your ground, you know, from a very earlier on stage. I wanted to yeah. talk about your family. Mm -hmm. um, they're really cool. Your sister, Maggie, um, is a musician as well. Yeah. Um, and she's also a therapist. Yes. She's quite vocal on, on your therapy um, issues mm -hmm. and even just industry issues mm -hmm. on Twitter. I follow her and I, I love to follow her tweets. Um, your mom is also a musician. Yes. And um, earlier on in life, I, I think I read in your bio that you'd, you know, go along with her on some music escapades when mm -hmm. she was in the choir. Yeah. So do you want to talk about, you know, the the influence yes. you've had in your family that has, you know, helped move your career forward and I see them supporting you. Yeah. I think sometimes you were singing with them. Yeah. Um that was really sweet. Mm -hmm. I think also that kind of speaks to why um I, I move in that different space like my family is in the typical like nuclear family or oh, doctor da, da, da. you know like my mom has been supportive of my singing since I was a kid my sister went to do her master's in music in the states when kids were being sent off to do computer science or something wow, I you didn't know I know she did that yeah she did her master's in was it vocal or something wow. she's an opera singer and then she did her master's also in social work and in psychology mm. so that's not you know that's not something most parents are no. open to just like supporting and being behind um so we've always kind of moved as a unit it's like us three against the world <laughs> so that's my first safest space like even if okay no no if not if i kill someone but like <laughs> maybe even if i kill someone like they'll help me hide the body you know like that's my first line of defense That's nice. yeah That's nice. so being around that um openness allowed me to just be to experiment and explore with my life mm. without feeling you know judged or held back or second guessing my career choices mm. um which we do second guess just because it's not an easy career path but deep down i know i'm doing the thing that you know, I love and I'm true to and I'm, I have a very strong support system. Mm. So growing up, seeing my sister bringing home awards um, from Music Fest. Yes. Yeah. So seeing like first, second, third place. When when that was everything, As a kid, it was like, almost like yeah. winning an Oscar. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> even just participating you in, know. In, in the Music Fest was a really big deal then. I wonder Which whether it's weird. still a I big know. deal now. I'm curious. Um, I Personally, I didn't do music first in high school. Mm. Like I wasn't in choir, I wasn't in drama. I also didn't because I, I didn't reach that level. Like you really ah. had to be at a certain level to be even part of the group going. <laughs> for me, it was like I'd write content for them. Like I'd write music for them to go with wow. for competitions. Wow. I, mean, I just wanted to be in school, um, entertaining guys in school. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, more or less, that's how my family influences uh, my work and my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you don't mind me asking, do, do you have a father or did you have a father figure? Ah, so uh, my mom is a single mom. Okay. So I'm raising a single parent home. Um, my father figures would be uncles. Um, there's a family friend who really was present for us uh, growing up. Mm. Um, but I haven't really had much of that. Mm -hmm. So it's always just been us girls. Um, probably also why I'm very keen on, you know, women empowerment, like that's all I've known my whole life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I, you know, who's my daddy? <laughs> <laughs> 
if it's you, call me. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh my goodness. But yeah, Hena. that's that's a story for another day. <clears throat> no worries. No yeah. worries. That's cool. So um, I think it was in 20, 20, 2019 and 2020, you, mm-hmm. you did win the Freema Awards for Best um, Artist in East Africa, Best Female Artist. Was ah, it did 2020? I win or was I nominated? Did you win or were you I nominated? Think I was, it was I a was nomination. Nominated. The one I won was Women in Business in uh-huh. 2017. Okay. I got a runners up something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I wanted to ask um you know what are your, what is your relationship with awards? Do they mean anything to you? Um or or what kind of accolade did you receive and you felt like, "Oh my god, like I this this is a big deal or mm. I, I really appreciate that I've been appreciated because sometimes um it's not just about receiving a trophy mm-hmm. but even receiving a the recognition validation that comes yeah. with it um it's kind of a love hate relationship with it I mean we all want to be validated for our work we all want to have all the accolades um I'm working hard to get them but not getting them doesn't mean that you're not good either mm. So you're not everyone's cup of tea. Mm. There's always someone who's, you know, has a bigger audience, a bigger this, that, who's moving faster than you are. Mm. So learning to to not let that be the only definition of your success. I think it's that is a, is a, yeah, it helps manage the expectations of, oh, I didn't win this. I should have won this. No, you did. The fact that you've been recognized, even just being nominated, a is a big win. And that's why I, I probably saw a nomination and I was like, she she must have won. Because I move like a winner, man. <laughs> I love you it. You know, so there's that. But um, I would love, I mean, we all want a Grammy. We all want, you know, I remember MTV Awards were like, <sighs> oh my when God. MTV when MTV Awards were yeah, MTV like, Awards. I couldn't wait to grow up and win an MTV Award. Yeah. But now it's just like, I'm just focusing on 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 my success being how how far I get to grow, how far mm. I get to go, and I'm sure the accolades will come in. Um, mm. Hopefully, you know, soon they'll keep coming in. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not so obsessed with them, but I also don't mind having a few trophies. Yeah, of yeah. course, of course. So you know, transitioning from the music into entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not something you did overnight, but something that you have been actively doing over the last couple of years. Yeah. You know, building a team around you, <clears throat> working on your fashion mm-hmm. line, um, you know, in marketing, branding, you know, having this phenomenal um, lifestyle part of your brand and business. Yeah. So how do you manage to do this? I'm asking this because a lot of artists kind of get lost in the industry when they are constantly looking for money to create projects to produce songs to shoot videos Mm -hmm. and then it ends at that if they don't receive if they don't get gigs and they don't get any money back yeah but i think what you've done with your company and we continue to do is creating different revenue streams um and creating different value um opportunities for your brand Mm -hmm. um and if you look at the music industry critically the richest musicians actually did not become rich off just the music. Yeah. But it was the tours, it was the, um, you know, businesses that they ran and so on and so forth. Yeah. So how did you manage to, you know, create this business and how do you continue to do it? What kind of advice would you give to the artists listening in terms of how to expand their brands beyond the music? Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't an overnight thing for sure. I think the realization that, of course, being a Kenyan artist, you can't rely on shows and especially not on streaming so how else are we gonna you know build business around the music I used to move as an artist artist like then I realized no actually this is your business like this is actually a business enterprise so start structuring it as such so when I'm checking in for work I'm CEO of Phenomenal Entertainment and Fena is the signed artist. So I have to remove myself from from the from being Fena Gitu. Like mm. now it's like to true Fena yeah. who has to see the vision that will build assets around this one entity. Mm-hmm. And the idea is to scale that to do that with more talents. Mm. Um right now, I mean we're still growing, so we're still finding our footing but the the structure is there the team 
is also finding its place. Everyone is now finding their place. Um, just the idea to build into the music business more than just singing. Because mm. what if I can't sing tomorrow, but then I have three albums that are three products that are really good. How are we selling this? Mm. Um, what other angles? Um, as Fena being a, a global citizen, how do I speak? How do I represent, you know, different entities? If it's mm. women, if it's youth, if it's, you know, anything. So just looking at scaling. Mm. Yeah. I like that. And that means there's a possibility, you know, to sign other artists or not particularly to sign them but develop you know, yeah to, exactly, yeah to develop exactly, their brands exactly. um, manage them <clears throat> or create just creating assets around them it doesn't have to be artists only i'm interested in many other things right now i'm very interested in film i can't decide if it's as phenomenal entertainment first or just as fenar mm. just to do music to to do what's it called acting which I just did uh, like a cameo on, on single, single Kiasi, Kiasi, which was really dope. Loved it. How that and happened. Then I saw the little clip you guys mm -hmm. did on social media, like the promo, like yes, how yes. it came about, how you were a fan. Yeah. And then you found yourself into the show. I was and just then a you were playing you. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I joined the show as a writer for season two. Then now the role kind of just happened. Mm. But my interest in how does this work in film? How, who writes? How are they writing? So what? You're now writing for TV? I want to. So that was just, uh, I was shadowing Phil Bresson and Grace Kahaki because mm -hmm. they're my friends and they do all these big productions and I want to understand every angle of how this thing comes together. Yeah. So if eventually we do end up branching into film, I have the structures and I have the networks in place. Mm. So I'm really just, right now I'm in a transition phase. It's, it feels very unsure. It, it feels like, damn, okay, so where are we going next? But the thing is, I'm trying to see 10, 20 years ahead mm. because this album is great. It's fantastic. What else? What next? What more is there to me other than just singing or rapping? Like, There's so much more that I'm trying to explore. I love that. Yeah. I love that. And you just mentioned this album is great. And we even haven't spoken about this album. So mm -hmm. your third album came out already in June. Yes. Um, Art, Love, Last. Yes. Love, and Art, Last. Love, Art, la yes. Last. It is the love that comes first. And yes. I love that um, part of the description of the album was that you look at this album and you look at the concept of it as if love was a religion or as if Love is the re mm -hmm. religion. Mm -hmm. So tell me about this. I really love, um, you know, that description. Yeah. And the fact that you also explain that love in different forms, not just the... The, 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 the typical romantic. The typical, yeah. But it could even be, you know, love of God. Yes. Or of other sorts of, you know, relationships. This is love. Being yeah. here is love. Um, so love, art, lust is a pun on, it's a wordplay on love at last. So in the last three years during the pandemic, um, a lot kind of, you know, a lot was happening mm. and nothing was happening at the same time. It was a time to be introspective. Mm. True. So even with the album cover, you can see I'm painting myself. It was really just me looking at into a mirror and just seeing myself for my flaws and for my good and for what could be. So that's essentially what this whole body of work is. And mm. it's eventually understanding that self-love is where it begins. Like you won't love unless you love yourself, unless you're being true to yourself, unless you're accepting just you, you are as flawed as, a, as you are great. Um, and spirituality also played a big role in the last three years to just my mindset and, you know, understanding Maybe I'm not in church, but I'm, you know, I still hold my spirituality close. I still want to do good and I want to be done for as, you know, the same. Mm. So if everyone in the world could live in love, we'd have 100% less problems yeah. in life, right? That's kind of, it, it, it's kind of idealistic, but that's where my head is at at mm. that point, um, creating this body of work. 
it's also very it's showing a lot of growth um you know we are adulting it's happening at 1000 <laughs> bits per minute so a lot of that you can feel it in the body of work mm. like you can feel the growth the the themes i'm touching on some are very adult some are very pg just trying to speak to everyone um and anyone who can relate yeah I wanted to ask about, you know, the choice of some of your collaborators. Mm -hmm. I think you have Brandy Miner in the album. Yeah. You had Wodomolo Beats. Yes. Um, there's this other producer who you work with often. What's his name? I Logos. Yes, I Logos yeah. as well. And there's Duflo as well. Dufla, Diligon. Yeah. Mm, yes. So Xenia is on Zinia it Xenia is well. on there as well. Yes. What was the, um, you know, reason to collaborate with each individual person in mm. the song in the songs did you see that they you know would write to the specific theme of the song or um how did that come about i'm a fan um i work with people i'm a fan of oh that's so cool. zinia <laughs> zinia I, I i was always keen on working with her but mm -hmm. we were friends like we're just friends um she was my neighbor at the time so one night she came over, we did a session till maybe like 2, 3 a.m. And then we did two songs and we were in tears. Like we were crying, oh, like wow. it was spiritual. It was a whole other connection. So that's how Living Legends came to be. And then there's a song on her project that's just amazing. I can't wait to hear it. Um, for Dufla, he's one of my favorite dancehall Kenyan artist, mm -hmm. like he has the tone, he has the texture, and he has the, he gets the patois like clean, like the dance hall is so clean. And me, like I love dance hall. Yes. I'm born and raised on dance hall, so it, it's an instant connection. Yes. We did Caterpillar, which was a hit. So I, I wanted to do something else on this album, mm. something for the streets, which Rise Up was. Um, who else? Brandy. Brandy is dope. Like Brandy is just like. This bub energy, like little bo ball of you know, energy, just like <laughs> when you meet her, she's like so tiny, but yeah. yo, she, you know, she's gives brilliant. off so much energy. I like her work ethic, so things like that endear me to someone. Like, I want to work with you, I want to do this with you. For producers, I Logos is like my main producer, just because we, we. And has been for some time. Yeah, for a very long time. Mm. So we have an understanding. Like, we know how to work with each he other. He gets your style. He gets me, I get him. Um, Wodomolo gets my soulfulness. So we did a song called Vaccine. And it was instant chemistry. So I knew I, I need more tracks from him. Mm. DTX, this was the first time I worked with him. Um, Hendrix as well. I'm trying to see who else is on the album. If I forget you, I'm sorry, but you're amazing. That's why we work <laughs> together. Yeah, but I love collaborating. I love um, dope, just people who are doing dope work. Mm. I don't care for, well, that's not true. I care for, you know, how far you've grown, but I like seeing people who are focused. Mm. You could be starting out or you could be, you've made it. Just mm. we're, we're in this thing together. And talking of collabos, you have had a lot of collaborations. I mean, if we add the new album um, mm -hmm. to all the songs you've released, at the moment you have released over 80 songs. Yeah. Or maybe even over 90 songs. Or even over 100 if we in, in include the crits, collaborations. Yeah, and the ones that are not released. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you look back, what were the interesting collaborations you had that you really enjoyed and why? Um, Many. I think almost all of them mm. like have something special to them. Something like Ranting with I, King that Kaka. That was my favorite. I wanted right? to say. That song is Dope. And the video, it's dope. like you're giving off Nairobi street culture and yeah. taking back to Buru. Yes, and I King just Kaka just, it. he embodies that and he's so hardworking. He's a cool, like he's just a cool guy. So mm. that was a really good collabo with Kaka Empire. Yeah. Um, Tessa was dope. Tessa with Nadia Mukami and mm -hmm. Kali Graf. Yes, that, that was did dope. really well. Nadia, I love her work ethic. Calligraph, OG is OG, you know, for life. Chukwa Selfie was dope. That was really dope. And that the was actually exceptional. Well, yeah, because one was the only chick on the lineup. So I'm in a room with these giants 
And in my head, I'm like, damn, what am I going to write about? Then calligraph 15 minutes, he was done with his verse, recorded, and he's out. So I'm sitting there like, eh, 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 fena, ebu, flex, pia, we, we, what the hell? So it's like, very quickly, it just popped in my head, and it was, the hook, the hook was just so flawless. Like, it was such a good project, mm. and it was validating for me, like, oh, you can be with kings and still stand out and be a king yourself. So that was a really validating point in my collabo sphere. Mm. <laughs> just, just, that just made me tear. Oh. Yeah. I oh, just felt that shit. <laughs> yeah, but all the collabos I've done, they've all just brought something special um, to me. The younger generation, I love working with them because those guys are onto different vibes. Mm. Like, they're thinking different. So it also challenges me to keep it fresh. Thinking about your life in the limelight mm -hmm. um, and you know before like those days when you used to hang in Buru it's just not those days anymore yeah now Fena you know has this global recognition nationwide recognition a lot of other fans who you've been you know who've been following you throughout the years mm -hmm. um, what do you love about you know being a celebrity being in the limelight and what don't you love about it mm, I love that I get shit for free <laughs> Everybody wants to invite we, you somewhere, you know, you know like, buy you drinks. I'm on a queue somewhere, and then someone comes, come, 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 Upite. Things like those, those are small, like. At the airport, they always yeah. like, Shh. You know, at the airport, actually, like, Juicy, I landed, and cops came, like, they saw me walking in, came, grabbed my bags, walked me through <laughs> customs, every. I was just like, okay, I can get used to this. <laughs> so, small things like that, those are just small moments of, you know, validation again. But I don't like, you know, I'm a, I'm a very shy, introverted person. Yeah. So that has always been a struggle with finding the balance. I remember just the other day I posted something about, I was feeling frustrated. Like, mm. I can't just go on a trip without it being this whole, like so many different versions of that story were being spread. I'm like, but that's not the story. Yeah. Like, ask me what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not having... Like, there's so much scrutiny. And yeah. And any time you're seen with anyone, there's so much scrutiny on who's this and mm. why you with the person. While you Which might is, just be... You're just kicking it. Or even you could be having something, yeah. but it's none of anyone's business, business, right? So there's that struggle of just finding, understanding that this is your life and this is the choice you've made. Mm. So you just kind of have to take it as it comes. Um, be try and control my own narrative as much as I can, mm. but also understand that, I mean, you're in a global sphere. Like, if anyone can say anything about you and that won't be in your control. So just coming to terms with that public versus personal yeah. life has been a bit of a struggle, but I'm okay with it. I'm just like... It's me, what it is. Yeah, if you if you come for me, I'll come for you. If you don't, I won't. You know. So <laughs> and and so, do you find yourself sometimes responding to some people, or do you just sometimes ignore it? I used to be very combative online. Okay. If there's one thing I'm happy I've changed is that, like, I used to be, oh, I was so heated online. Like, mm. you, you you tweet something, I'm right on your neck, like twenty. But it was taking too much of my energy mm. and my happiness. Like, I just want to be in this online space and be myself. And you interpret me as you wish, but that's on you. That's probably your own, you, what are they called? You're projecting your own exactly. issues insecurities and insecurities. And issues, yeah. yeah. So eventually, I kind of just fell back. Every so often, if I wake up on the wrong side of the bed, <laughs> and then I, I you know, you, just get look, it. you scroll through, you're like, hmm, <laughs> what am I going for today? you then you kind of just like <laughs> jab at them but that's not just for me being me yeah. um i've been saying i'm the bully's bully because i don't like bullies i hate bullies i, I hate I, bullies so i and I'm, I'm tough like i'm i can be a bully if i want to so i and that's to say speaking up for people who can't speak for themselves or just using your platform to be a voice for less advantage people mm. that kind of translates into mm. that but me if you come for me or oh, is beef <laughs> <laughs> but i've learned a lot i've changed a lot of things i'm adulting um you know just life there's more to life than what's online mm. there's more to life than the song i've dropped like 
I have a life outside these walls. So let me focus on that and being a good person. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of being a voice, you know, for the voiceless or for other things yeah. and people, you're also very passionate about um, social change. You're a champion for that. Yeah. What are some of the causes that you, you know, you back or you're super passionate about? Um, many, many because um, most of these things affect me one way or another, mm. affect people around me. Uh, my fans, I have a very inclusive fan base. Um, the LGBTQ community, I have a very big following there. I have a very big interest in that. Mm. Mental health is also something very close to me. Also based off of my family, um, mental health is something very crucial. Um, I've worked on projects with one.org um, to do with healthcare. Mm -hmm. Uh, but really, for me, I, I'm hoping to do more work with women and youth um, in leadership mm -hmm. and empowerment, you know, just projects around that. So as we continue, you know, we'll keep the doors open and see where we fit in and where we can add our voice to. Mm, that's so fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming over to my podcast. Mm -hmm. Before I, um, I wrap up, I just wanted to ask you to maybe, I'm thinking of what to ask you. I'm always asking my guests um, five kind of questions, tips, mm -hmm. and it's always off the bat. I never know what I'm going to ask you, just Let's depending go. on where the interview goes. So I think for the artists listening and want to you know, have a career in the music industry, want to branch out to become their own bosses and start their own companies, what would be the five tips that you'd give an artist starting out to mm -hmm. longevity? One, are you good at what you do? Do you believe that you're good at it? Um, and if not, are you doing everything you can to perfect that skill? Mm. Your skill is what will sell you beyond everything else. Two, um, do you have a good support system? Mm -hmm. um, a, a good team. The team thing is a bit, it takes some time to find a team that works. Were you my manager at some point? No. No. Were you? I feel like I was. No, no, no. I it was so. Adele. It was Adele. No, briefly. it wasn't me. No, we did the PR, your PR. Yes, yes, yeah. we did my PR. Um, I mean, as you can see, like it's, it's always changing until mm. you find the people who really get you and are invested in you. Um, consistency. Exposure, we, we talk about it like it's such a bad thing. It can be when it's misused and mm. when you're being used for it, but there are spaces that you, you will gain more value just by showing up and not expecting anything mm. back. Um, discipline, consistency, those things that we're told, ha work hard, be disciplined, don't give up. Those are real things. Like It's tough, tough, tough. So you mm. really have to have a thick skin for it. And just have fun with it. It's never that serious. Mm. Don't let people distract you or de what's, demoralize you from trying something. Here you try and fail, then not try at all. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Better try and fail than never try at all. Yeah. What do you want to say, you know, to those listening, those watching you, um, you know, Fena fans, Die Hard fans, Kina Sisi, mm. and also for those who don't know who Fena is and are just discovering you, yeah. what do you want to tell them? You are in for an amazing ride. Like, we're not done. This work will continue for a long time. So just keep supporting, keep following, um, keep sending love. I mean, that reassurance keeps me going and knowing that you're listening. Mm. Um Support wherever you can. Speak my name in rooms where I'm not in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we just grow this community. We're called the fanatics. We be phenomenal together. Fantastic. Yeah. And obviously, you can um, stream all of Fena's music yes. on all digital platforms. You can follow her on all her social media platforms. Mm -hmm. um, the album Love at Last is finally out. Yes. It was really anticipated. We're really excited that it's doing well. The videos are there, uh, popping. So please support and listen to Fena. Um, who else do you want to shout out? Are we done? Uh, my team. Yes. Wedera Yvonne, Jerry. <laughs> Thank you. I see you guys. Uh, my family, my friends, my fans. I love you so much. Peace. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you all for tuning in to VIP Access. 
Today's special guest was Fena Gitu, the phenomenal woman herself um, from right here in Nairobi, Kenya. Next week, we're going to have another amazing celebrity. And by the way, I'm starting to plug myself out there. Yes. If you're listening and you want to support VAP Access, you want to support amazing artists and creatives in Kenya or around Africa, want to be part of this, please reach out to me directly or reach out to Sema Books, my producers, and we'll be happy to work with you. It's on that amazing, phenomenal note that we end the show Mama today. Bees. You have to listen to Fenner's <laughs> music. Peace out. Peace. VIP Access. VIP Access. With Aniko on Africa Loud.